The Mathematicians. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Mathematicians by Arthur Feldman. We gave this story to a very competent and very pretty gal artist. We said, read this carefully, dream on it, and come up with an illustration. A week later, she returned with a finished drawing. The hero, she said. We did a double take. Hey, that's not the hero. She looked us straight in the eye. Can you prove it? She had us. We couldn't, and she left hurriedly to go home and cook dinner for her family. And what were they having? Frog legs. What else? They were in the garden. Now, Zoe, said Xenia Hawkins to her nine-year-old daughter, quit fluttering around and Papa will tell you a story. Zoe settled down in the hammock. A true story, Papa? It all happened exactly like I'm going to tell you, said Drake Hawkins, pinching Zoe's rosy cheek. Now, 2,011 years ago in 1985, figuring by the earthly calendar of that time, a tribe of beings from the dog star Sirius invaded the earth. What did these beings look like, Father? You know, like, like humans in many, many respects. They each had two arms, two legs, and all the other organs that humans are endowed with. Wasn't there any difference at all between the star beings and the humans, Papa? There was. The newcomers, each and all, had a pair of wings covered with green feathers growing from their shoulders and long purple tails. How many of these beings were there, Father? Exactly three million and forty-one male adults and three female adults. These creatures first appeared on Earth on the island of Sardinia. In five weeks' time, they were the masters of the entire globe. Didn't the Earthlings fight back, Papa? The humans warred against the invaders using bullets, ordinary bombs, super atom bombs, and gases. What were those things like, Father? Oh, they've passed out of existence long ago. Ammunition, they were called. The humans fought each other with such things. And not with ideas like we do now, Father? No, with guns, just like I told you. But the invaders were immune to the ammunition. What does it immune mean? Proof against harm. Then the humans tried germs and bacteria against the star beings. What were those things? Tiny, tiny bugs that the humans tried to inject into the bodies of the invaders to make them sicken and die. But the bugs had no effect at all on the star beings. Go on, Papa. These beings overran all Earth. Go on from there. You, you must know these newcomers were vastly more intelligent than the Earthlings. In fact, the invaders were the greatest mathematicians in the system. What's the system? What does mathematician mean? The Milky Way. A mathematician is one who is good at figuring, weighing, measuring, clever with numbers. Then, Father, the invaders killed off all the earthlings? Not all. They killed many, but many others were enslaved. Just as the humans had used horses and cattle, the newcomers so used the humans. They made workers out of some, the others they slaughtered for food. Papa, what sort of language did these star beings talk? Well, very simple language. But the humans were never able to master it. So the invaders, being so much smarter, mastered all the languages of the globe. What did the earthlings call the invaders, father? Anvils. Half angels, half devils. Then, Papa... Everything was peaceful on Earth until after the anvils enslaved the humans? For a little while. Then some of the most daring of the humans, 
led by a man named Know-All, escaped into the interior of Greenland. This Know-All was a psychiatrist, the foremost on earth. What's a psychiatrist? A dealer in ideas. Then he was very rich. He'd been the richest human on earth. After some profound thought, Noah figured a way to rid the earth of the anvils. How, Papa? He perfected a method called the Noah Hughes Ilinsky Zenia interrupted of imbuing these anvils. Aren't you with human talking emotions. a bit above the child's understanding? Drake? What does imbuing mean? No, Mama said Zoe. He filled them. I understand what full Papa of explained. Made them aware now don't of. Interrupt. So Noah continued Drake filled the anvils with human feelings such as love, hate, ambition, jealousy, malice, envy, despair, hope, fear, shame, and so on. Very soon the anvils were acting like humans, and in ten days, terrible civil wars wiped out the anvils' population by two-thirds. Then, Papa, the anvils finally killed off each other? Almost, until among them a being named Zalabar, full of saintliness and persuasion, preached the brotherhood of all anvils. The invaders quickly converted, quit their quarrels, and the earthlings were even more enslaved. Oh, Papa, weren't Noah and his followers in Greenland awfully sad the way things had turned out? For a while, then Noah came up with the final payoff. Is that slang, Papa? Payoff? Yes, uh, the coup de grace. The ace in a hole that he'd saved if all else failed. I understand, Papa. The idea that would out-trump anything the other side had to offer. What was it, Father? What did they have? Huh. Noah imbued the anvils with nostalgia. What is nostalgia? Homesickness. Oh, Papa, wasn't Noah smart? That meant the anvils were all filled with desire to fly back to the star from where they had started. Exactly. So, one day all the anvils, an immense army flapping their great green wings, assembled in the Black Hills of North America. And at a given signal, they all rose up from Earth and all the humans chanted, Glory, glory, the day of our deliverance! So then, Father... All the anvils flew away from Earth? Not all. There were two child anvils, one male and one female, aged two years, who had been born on Earth. And they started off with all the other anvils and flew up into the sky. But when they reached the upper limits of the stratosphere, they hesitated, turned tail, and fluttered back to Earth where they'd been born. Their names were Zizo and Ziza. What happened to Zizzo and Zizza, Papa? Well, like all the anvils, they were great mathematicians, so they multiplied. Oh, Papa! laughed Zoe, flapping her wings excitedly. That was a very nice story. End of the Mathematician by Arthur Feldman